Hello and welcome everyone to DRJ's webinar series. I'm Bob Arnold, President here at Disaster Cover Journal. Today's sponsor is Perpetuity and the topic is redefining resilience. If you cannot quantify, you cannot qualify. Before we get started, I want to review a couple housekeeping items. Today's session is being recorded. This recording will be shared with everyone tomorrow via an automated email you'll receive. Uh, attendees are also in a listen-only mode. If you'd like to ask any questions, please use the question panel you will locate on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, we will answer as many of these questions as possible at the end of the session. And now back to today's topic on redefining resilience. Our presenter today is Sean Blevins. For more than 30 years across Microsoft, Oracle, SAP, Booz Allen, Hamilton, Sean has been leading innovations in software-driven continuity and resilience with a focus on AI and machine learning. As Chief, Chief Revenue Officer and Head of North America with the Perpetuity, Sean helps companies like PepsiCo and Delta Airlines realize an average 80% reduction in RTO and 50% savings in operating costs, leveraging control, continuity patrol and vault. And with no further introduction, I'd like to now welcome, turn the mic over to Sean. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. And thank you for taking time today. This is so uh, critical uh, in, the, in the way that we're working with companies. This is an inflection point, and I thank you for investing this time with us. We promised to uh, make this, you know, I saw this great guy uh, named Randy Posh, and he did something called the last lecture. And he said, every time you speak in public, it should be that you get out everything you want to say and leave nothing out. Make sure that you give them your, you know, the best you have. So hopefully today we're going to share a lot of information. We're going to give you a lot to think about. Um, and we're going to start with this concept of resilience redefined. And I've been in this space, as Bob mentioned, for a while. And where the bar was set uh, needs to uh, needs to come up. And with the companies we work with, the bar is set extremely high for us from an accountability and execution. We have seats in you know our customers that that redefine resilience. They have uh, a trusted, proactive, strategic advantage. They have a seat at the table at the board level because of what they're bringing to the business. And I want to show you that. I want to show you exactly how that works, how we get them there, how how they uh, take control and start this journey to where they want to go. So let's just dive in. So a little bit about us. We've been around for 11 years. We are uh, started out with funding from Intel Capital. They remain our largest shareholder. Uh, we have over 400 enterprise customers. We are uh, across the globe with the largest banks. We'll show you all these, the manufacturing, the logistics, airlines, uh, 80 global partnerships. You'll see our platform, 500 employees, and a lot of investment in R&D. You mentioned, you heard AI. We'll get back to that here towards the, the end of the call. I'll show you the roadmap, show you the innovations that we're doing. But this is about defining and redefining resilience. If you can't quantify the impact of the business, if you can't quantify what it means, and you can't take prescriptive action to solve, then you can't qualify. The business needs to know what they're going to get. What is the competitive and strategic advantage of having a true resilience strategy? So what, what sets us apart? We're gonna show you that. One thing that sets us apart is this idea of patents. We have three global patents here. The first one I'll draw your attention to is systems and method for business impact analysis and DR, disaster recovery. This is unique to perpetuity and it is the ability to show and develop and prove business impact analysis at the board level, shareholder impact, reputation, all these things, and define at the minute what RTO and RPO, what each moment of downtime for key applications, for key parts of your business, what does that do when your ATMs don't work or your supply chain isn't available? What does it mean? So that's a global patent. You'll see the, the one at the bottom I'll draw your attention to, and this is incredibly important too, parallel processing and load balancing for business continuity planning. What that means in, in, in simple terms is uh, automation. So when, when, when the machines begin to speak, they can begin to speak far faster than human beings and they can do things at the same time, not in serial fashion where you're waiting on one person to act in the other, but actually moving uh, components, moving people, process and technology in, in concert, in orchestration at the same time. So we have the global patent for those two Things are very important. They'll come up in, in what we're discussing going forward. 
want to share a little of our, our global marquee customers. Uh, obviously, uh, Vodafone is huge. It's the world's largest global mobile customer, all these countries around the globe. I'm just drawing your attention to some of these. In the government, all the governments, Dubai, India, Asia Pac, uh, increasingly in the U.S., some of these we can't talk about because they haven't uh, closed yet. Banking services, over 150 global banks, ICIC Bank, Barclays, uh, there's uh, Australian National Bank. Uh, I'll draw your attention to the Bombay Stock Exchange, which is open 22 hours a day. The only stock exchange in the world that is open 22 hours a day. Uh, you know, some of the other ones here, you see Kotak, you see Reliance, you see Yes Bank, um, BNB Paribas, Global Bank, um, ICIC Bank. Uh, and then in manufacturing, there's a story here we want to talk about more in just a second, but Jaguar Land Rover owned by Tata Motors, Tata Steel, PepsiCo, uh, Fiat, uh, Olympic Pharmaceuticals, Yokohama Tires, Emerson. These are all incredible stories of where people started a journey and now have complete control over their resilience. And we'll talk more about that. In the airline space, Delta Airlines, Jet Aviation are a couple of really good examples we'll talk about. So I want to draw your attention to the real world impact. This came out, you can see this August 30th, that four seven, this actually is in the last 24 hours. It was updated eight hours ago. Toyota is not currently a customer for us. Tata, their competitors that make all the Tata cars uh, in India and China, and then make Jaguar and Land Rover uh, for Europe and Asia and, uh, and, for the, and for the US, North America, South America, they are a customer. So at Toyota, their production went down after a system failure. All 14 domestic assembly plants. System failure preventing Toyota from ordering parts. Uh, the, they don't know why. It's not likely to be cyber attack. And you know what it usually is? It's a mistake. It's a man-made error. It's a glitch caused by someone uh, misloading a file or fat fingering something or adding some characters in there somewhere. They won't know because human beings did it and human beings will continue to do it. As long as they're involved in, res in the resilience uh, path, critical path, you'll continue to have these, what they call man-made glitches or major malfunctions, right? So see the reference. The difference here is what was the strategic uh, competitive and market impact when something like this is published on Reuters? What happens when uh, your stock price, when this occurs, right? You see the stock closes down 0.2%. Uh, well, it'll continue to drop down if those uh, 25 production lines aren't available. So we'll talk about what that means and how that works. Now let's contrast that with another event, uh, which was, and we're all familiar with the Southwest debacle here in the US and the FAA shutting all the flights down for a couple of days. Those were simply a fat finger. If you want to know the detail for that uh, at Southwest, it had to do with the way they assemble the crew and have the crews available for the planes. But they couldn't do that. They couldn't stock the planes. They couldn't fly the planes. So Delta came to us uh, in 2018, and we started talking to them. We implemented their solution in 2019. And since 2019, for the last, what is that, four years, thousand plus days, they have an RTO of 83% reduction and zero canceled flights due to any IT availability issues. That's a record they've never achieved before. If you can't monitor, you can't manage. If you can't quantify, you can't qualify. So the ability for them to go back, and this is at the CEO level, and say, we have less then a two hour RTO, no matter what, which means you never have to cancel a flight. We reduced their operating people from 50 plus people trying to manage resilience and continuity to five people. And we did that across 80 critical applications and 14 technology platforms. And you can read the quote there at the bottom from the CEO of Delta. Um, the ability to do this is the core capability of software that's sitting in our suite, that's sitting in this resilience based suite. So what about Pepsi? Same situation, Pepsi, again, national, uh, we all know Pepsi, right? Uh, and uh, we have expanded now, we, we're doing this across, I think we're 25% of Pepsi now, uh, we're still rolling out across the entire infrastructure, it's a massive infrastructure, massive applications. Um, but our product there has been delivered across, uh, you know, single pane glass to watch in real time, all of the different issues around people, process and technology for their key core applications. Uh, the reduction of uh, RTO and RPO by 82% currently, and we're working to, you know, bring that down even more. But we're talking minutes instead of days or hours. We're talking the ability to track that and report that. So, a couple more examples. Uh, if you you need to be able, and this is something that our customers tell us they've never been able to do before. Right now, when you do a drill, it's a question of bringing people on a conference line or a bridge or having them with their SMS on their phones, hoping 
that they respond and act. You're putting them in the right distribution list and email and hoping for a response back because the people are having to complete the actions. You're having to wait and get approval and, and assurance that that's taking place. With, an, with ICIC Bank, they use Perpetuity. They do over 1,500 disaster recovery grills across the last three years. That's not even possible with humans. You have to have automation. You have to be able to monitor in real time and do drills at, at, uh, on, on demand. And I'll talk a little bit about this because in the Middle East and in Europe in particular and in Asia, there's now a whole new set of laws and regulations that say I can walk into your organization and I can demand a, a, on an unannounced audit where you have to push the button and show me the report that this that you have true resilience. And if the person who's in charge of that is out of, out of the office, that doesn't matter. I still want my audit report. So here you see Axis Bank, $39, uh, $37 billion market cap, um, and they did 300 drills last year. Imagine being able to iterate and get those drills and get your RTO down where you need it to be. Same thing for Barclays. Barclays is massive, right? 1,000 branches, 6,000. This is in South Africa. Um, 1,600 drills for switchover switchbacks. They're IT ops. Same result, same RTO examples coming out. So what I want you to think about is how you begin to quantify the value of resilience. Can you quantify what it means to the business? How do you avoid and become right there poised when an event happens to take market share? When a customer or a supplier wants to move from, you know, when, when incidents are going to happen, they're going to happen to everybody. There's no way to avoid them. There's so much money spent to avoid uh, cyber attacks or, you know, ransomware. The problem is, what do you do when they get in? They're going to get in one way or the other with just about everybody, no matter how much you spend on the front door. But once they're in, what happens then? Can you can you fix it in minutes? Can you fix it in an hour? Can you fix it in a couple of hours? Or are you down and do you lose uh, hard dollar revenue? And then what's the impact of not being able to do that? How do you go back to the business and prove? If you can't quantify, then you can't qualify. So you have to be able to do that using more than just written plans that you put in a spreadsheet and hope that work if something comes along. The purpose of the drilling, the purpose of going through this by incident is to show in hard dollars exactly what it means and how you do that across people, process, and technology. All these layers have to have orchestration. They have to be able to be monitored and looked at. So we're going to show you that in the next few minutes. You know, this is the truth, and this is something we hear, you know, when people let their hair down and they start talking honestly to me and others, they say, disaster doesn't take an appointment. We drill a lot. We have planned times to go and look at our, our, our uh, continuity plans. We we uh, write them up, we, we go through the drills, we get on the conference calls. But if something actually happened, and right now there's two uh, hurricanes heading, one's I think heading to Tampa, one's on the East Coast. Uh, if those hit, the first thing that happens is they evacuate. <laughs> because people are not going to be anywhere near the business. Secondly, they're not going to be caring about the business. The human beings are going to be caring about their children, their parents, their grandparents, uh, their neighbors, the community they're in. They're going to be looking for help. They're going to be looking to avoid the the floods and and the the uh, the danger. The last thing they're going to be, you know, it's number 39 on the list is, hey, I'm responsible for step 14 in a continuity plan at work. Well, I'll get to that when I get to it, right? So the key idea is, if it's if it's resilient, it's only resilient. And I love this. You'll see this in our in our keynote at DRJ. We've got the former CTO of IBM, a guy named Richard Kochihara. And he had this amazing quote. He walks up to our booth last year and he says, listen, if it's not automated, it's not resilient. I thought, God, my head, my, my light bulb went on. And that's the truth. If you don't have this prepared and totally lights out and tested and drilled, and you can't prove it in real time with hard dollar impact, then you don't have a plan. You have a, a notional plan. You know, I read a great book the other day. It said hope is not a strategy. Hope is not a strategy. Well, today when we walk into organizations, they can map out exactly what they're going to do. They put their continuity plans and uh, tools. They have everything, you know, they can say, well, in, you know, two months ago in CMDB, everything looked like this. But, you know, that doesn't mean that when you when the flood hits or the enterprise hits or the cyber attack hits, you know, this is the problem. You know, this procedure only takes 200 engineers, 40 hours to execute. We've got to do better. We've got to redefine resilience in a way that is provable to the business 
and can be tested. So think about it like an assembly line. When disaster strikes, people may not be available. They usually aren't available. They're, they're off taking care of their own. Uh, and the recovery can't be dependent upon manual intervention. You see here the two assembly line methods. The, the, the old school GM method on the right, you see Tesla's Gigafactory method. There, you don't see any humans in that picture. There's somebody monitoring the real-time build here and looking through that. There's someone looking to see at every level what can be taken out of the out of the what can be done in parallel, right? How many things are being done on both sides of that car at the same time, right? And and what if you know what if Sally's sick that day? Well then I guess nobody's on the right side of the car. So you've got to go away from manual efforts into automation. You've got to go from SMEs and scripting and multiple tools, multiple commands, hoping it works, doing a drill only when you can get everybody together or you know spending millions of dollars a year with an SI to do drills on your behalf because your tier zero, your tier one, your tier two applications, there's just too much complexity. Um, these are the things we, we walk into in these organizations and you need, you need to be able to be in control. You need standardization, freedom, you need assurance at the continuity level. So how do we solve this? Well, we got to get away from agents and scripts, right? There's no central control. There's a potential threat. Someone gets mad. Someone messes one's up. They leave the company. Only they knew what that script actually did. Lack of real-time visibility. The, the idea that you do a point-in-time plan and you stick it in a spreadsheet and put it on the shelf doesn't work. Or you have many tools and many solutions and you have partial orchestration with your people still having to do something. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've walked in an organization and there's three people there and the only three people who know the diff, the, the endpoints and the dependencies in the business between the hardware applications, the middleware, uh, the way that flows back into the organization, the, those people leave, those people are unavailable, you're done. So you can't have dependency on these subject matter expertise, no matter how good they are, they're just humans. They won't be there in certain times of need. Uh, the ability to iterate, and iterate as much as you want, you saw those hundreds of drills, the ability to test as much as you want um, leads to high RTO. If you, if you can't test, then you, you don't really know until it happens what RTO is. Uh, but if you can monitor in real time, you can do that. And then the lack of compliance. This is so important. In a global world, now we're seeing uh, the emergence, and we're working with some of the customers around this idea of FedNow and, and, and the procedures uh, that are being required at a global level across the central banks. So you need to be able to demonstrate that you have global level of compliance matching this ISO 22301 uh, standard. And if you can't do that, well, then you're really not compliant, and that becomes very obvious at your in your uh, value chain. So, how do you get to this idea of standardization, simplification? Well, we offer, and you heard Bob mention, Continuity Patrol, Continuity Vault. This is a resilient suite. Continuity Vault handles people and process. Continuity Patrol handles the technology layer, the ability to automate all of the technologies, and it is comprehensive. It is absolutely agnostic. It covers every application, platform, cloud, database, network, storage, hardware, software, doesn't matter. Every layer monitored in real time, ready for simulations and drills. You can do as many drills as you want. You can execute as many workflows as you want, test it, and prove it until you get a configured RTO, RPO that you believe in and you can trust. Now, this works across every single layer of the environment. Um, from the end user experience, we've got a healthcare system, one of the largest research systems. And uh, they wanted to test instead of, uh, they want to do it on the DR side, but then after they bring the applications up, they no longer want to uh, have to go through and run each transaction and make sure that it works. Same thing for banks. If, you know, if after I bring up this massive set of applications, I can't wait a day while somebody sits there and tests that I can add a patient or I can complete a transaction. So we automate that all the way through the transactions, the middleware, the database, the OS, the servers, both physical and virtual network storage for both on-premise and cloud. So it is a comprehensive, accountable, complete waterfront solution without uh, deploying agents, without scripting, uh, without um, dependence on SMEs, as I mentioned. The two things I'll draw your attention to are on this uh, right side here, the, the parallel recovery. This is where the machine speaks and begins to find opportunities to collapse the complexity reducing the RTO by 70%, 80% on average. And then how do we do that? And I, this is the kind of the thing that drew me to the company. My, my career started with Microsoft. And there was a seminal moment for those of you who've been in this for a long time when Microsoft took over the world. 
Uh, you may remember things like Lotus One Two Three, WordPerfect, Harvard Graphics. They had the top market share uh, when uh, Microsoft DOS came out, when it was IBM, uh, Unix, and things like that, because they were, you know, great applications. The problem was trying to move information and images between them. So there was a moment when Windows came out. And when Windows came out, you could hit Control C and Control V and cut and paste between Word and Excel and PowerPoint. And it was magic. No one really understood that. And then any other application that came into the Windows environment had that ability for cut and paste. And the way that happened, the reason that that took over the world and that OS became default was because there was a series of dynamic link libraries that understood how to move that data between these applications. That is exactly what Perpetuity is built with continuity control. For every vendor, for every technology from the cloud down to the middleware to the application, the database, the storage, you name it, those libraries are built. So we've got that missing OS with pre-configured workflow with all the solutions for every vendor and technology that's out there. So now you can cut and paste your workflows at the inf information and the infrastructure layer across everything that's going on across your business. So when you have a true continuity plan, that means that you can execute it in real time. You can monitor it, look at the dependencies between the applications, and deploy it. This is what changes the game. So the result is, like we said, 80% reduction in RTO on average. The ability to do anytime drills, and I think we've shown that there's over 100,000 drills last year done by our customers, which is just phenomenal when you think about it. As much as you want to hit the button and iterate, iterate, run these drills. We'll show you the software briefly. We want to tease this for, you know, obviously we'd like to do a full demo with it, but we'll give you some idea what's there. 50% reduction in operating costs. That means human beings are out of the loop. They get notified. They they validate the workflow. They look at it, but they're out of the loop of having to actually put their hands on to take those actions. And then out of the box compliance that we mentioned, and we'll show all this to you. So the ability to switch over, switch back, fail over, fail back for any planned activity, for any drill or actual disaster, all there at the software level, supported as a product. Now, I'll take a minute and just kind of tease you a little bit with what's in here, what's in the actual box. So for people in process, you need a living dashboard that comes up and shows you what's going on at the facility level, what's happening across the different teams, the different departments, all these things that are there. But you need to have trust in it, that it's happening in real time so that you can see for the, for the incidents that I have built across my organization, the people and the teams that are involved, what needs to take place. So all of that comes to you in a single pane of glass at using Continuity Vault. This is the people and process layer. Now, if I mentioned if you can't quantify, you can't qualify. So here you see where you can build out in hard dollars the financial impact in millions. And this is for, I think this was for a, a large, we'll say governmental financial institution. I'll leave that uh, to you to figure out what that might be. Uh, but for each hour of downtime and for each issue and penalties, claims, brand, contractual liability services. I mean, these are all, uh, you can label these and, and pick from whatever you want. We have some guidance there in a lexicon, but you can pick whatever you need and really define for each incident, for each moment of downtime, what's that dollar cost and roll that up. So here you see, and again, this is part of that global patent we have for what is the impact in dollars? What's the impact by category? What does it mean if you're down for two hours to four hours of RTO. If you're actually down, if you can come back in two hours, then it's only going to cost you, you know, in this case, it's uh, about $3.7 billion. Oh. This is a very large organization uh, in, in the United States. So this is an example demo we did for them. We can build one for you. You can see exactly how this works with your company. And then how do we manage the recovery? How do we actually build recovery plans and test and drill that? So here you see um, the step name business. <laughs> we had to change some of the details here so that you know, nobody was uh, nothing proprietary, but you can see for that incident and the steps we put in, you just simply put that incident reported, damage assessment. You go in here and build out the workflow. It can be all conditional, whatever you need it to be, but then it gets into execution. So when you go to run that workflow and in incidents, you can see that it starts and you can see things running, assigned, acknowledged, all those things that happen across the different people in the departments, people receiving the notifications. They need to know what they need to do. But here's where it gets. I don't know, one light year, two light years ahead of whatever else you've seen in the market. 
And that is when these steps run, you can see down here and you get to this point where it says updated through continuity vault on this date from this user. You can see that they were messaged in email and text, it's same as everything else there at the top in this area. When you get down to right here for this step, this operation resumed, yes, interdependent, yes. And then it says CP, that's continuity patrol profile name. This is where it has ran a set of, ro of uh, automated workflows that no human touched. So for this particular step, this was actually done not by human beings, but it went down into the application, into the workflow, into the servers, into the apps, the database, and ran that action and presented that back as a completed step in this overall um, incident-based workflow. So complete automation, complete visibility. When you get to this point, you go in here and you can see at the drill summary level, this actually happened. The configured RTO time was an hour and a half. It happened in, um, the actual was, a, was a, I think that's an hour and 27 minutes. You can see the fail over there at the level, at the IP level. This presents itself back into the workflow and into that particular step. So people, process, and technology all in one, all together with complete audit compliance to that ISO standard. So if you think about how all that works, the question is, how does it work? How do you get to the technology layer? Well, if you can't monitor, you can't manage, right? So you have to have real-time monitoring. This is the this is where your uh, we won't name names, but this is where your CMDB and your business continuity planning and these things they kind of fall down, and they fall down not because they aren't great for documentation, but documentation is not active. The the scenario that a CEO explained to me about two weeks ago that that uses our product he says if I was going in for surgery, I have two things. I have my file. Right? I have my file of all my histories and my medications and my, my treatments and all the things that's happened to me to get me to that point. But when I go into the hospital, when something actually needs to be done, they don't, they don't just leave the file on my bed. They actually hook me up right, to EKG machines and oxygen and blood sensing and all the things that they need to know about me at that moment in time because they're getting ready to open me up and do something. They're getting ready to take some action to remediate. In that moment, I need my vitals to the second. I can't rely on what the doctor said I should have. Like if the guy wrote down three weeks ago, I recommend this patient for surgery, that's great. But that doesn't help me when I'm in the surgery room or when I'm sitting in my room waiting for surgery. My vitals have to happen as it happens. So when you look at this, this dashboard, what you're seeing here is configured RTO by the minute, by priority, you see what's configured 90 minutes, it took nine minutes. So even though you can configure it up when you run the drills, you find out that 90 minutes is actually nine minutes. And over here you see in real time that application, in this case it's EBS, uh, that's, that's an ERP system from Oracle. Um, that EBS, what's the dependencies on it? Well, it's dependent upon something called CTS, and CTS runs on DataGuard, SQL Server, DB2. These are all the contributing devices and contributing infrastructure components that lead up to Oracle EBS. So all that business level, IT level relationship is there, monitored in real time as it happens for all your key applications. And across the top, you see business functions, alerts, and things like that. What makes this happen, if you look at the IT view, is you've got your DR and your production components, production server and DR server down here, and then you've got all the infra objects that are status is running, what are the health of them, and so on. And we can manage that in real time and let you see it. So if you can't monitor, you can't manage. And if you can't quantify, you can't qualify. So you need these to work in union, right? There's the, there's the condition of the patient as it occurs. And then there's what does it mean if all of a sudden there's a fire and we have no fireman? What does that cost me? Well, in the Lahaina things, when there was nobody there to deal with and they shut the roads down, it was the worst possible outcome. But no one planned. I'm sure they had myriads of plans and myriads of resources, myriads of emergency people, but they didn't execute. And they couldn't execute because it wasn't automated. There was no automation testing. There had been no drills. And they were wholly unprepared. And that's where you can't be. But if you are prepared and your competitor is not prepared, then you have strategic advantage. And you can go take that market share. You can step in and take that business. And you become a strategic advantage to the business. So how do we do this at the technology layer? We mentioned that we have workflows out of the box and libraries out of the box. We have now used AI-based uh, behavioral and scenario-based things where you can literally go in here to what I, what I think is one of the coolest things 
is our workflow builder. Download the workflow, and there it is. There's a best practice workflow. You'll notice over here it says action type storage. Every layer that I showed you in the other slide, whether it be database, middleware, storage, all those layers are sitting here with a set of actions, and then underneath that there's actual vendors. So here you see the Dell Avamar host. You pick your, your layer, you pick your vendor, and then you go up here and you pick your, you know, here comes the workflow. And you'll notice, it's not so much here, I'll show you in a future slide. You can go through here and, and the machine will start, in, in our current versions, will begin to recommend using uh, AI and best practice, uh, starting to collapse what components can come and work together. If you've got 15 applications, 45 databases, you know, 45 VMware machines, you're working across two different clouds, that doesn't happen with human beings. But the identifications and interdependencies of these applications and components, the machine can watch those in real time, look at the flows and say, hey, these, these are not in conflict. They can happen and be brought back up together. They can bring up five applications at the same time and 15 VMwares at the same time because these are not fighting each other. So this is where you get to the patented capability of our software to drive RTO down by 70, 80, 90%. So here you see you're downloading that library-based workflow. We're bringing that in. You bring it in, you see it's conditional, so you get notified if you'd like. Of, you know, again, zero scripting, zero SME resources, and supported with an SLA as a product. So out of the box, reporting here, you see the parallel operation details of all the components that came at the same time, what happened. So all that reporting is there in ISO format. You can also import all of this back into your CMDB. So a lot of times your CMDB, you've got application owners that are entering information and you're hoping that that information is accurate. If you can import the result of a drill back in the CMDB, you can say, this information was accurate as of an hour ago, as of yesterday. And so you see these companies drilling tens and hundreds of times. Well, that's the only way you know for sure that something that the business hasn't changed, that all those servers and applications are available, they're living in the same IP address, uh, the right people are doing the right things, you ping, you send a message out, you don't get a response, what happened to that guy? Oh, he doesn't work here anymore. Oh, well, I didn't know that, right? Or or there's no response, what, what, what happened to that guy? I, you know, all those horror stories go away when you can drill in real time and you find out this guy, what the job he was doing was he was sitting at a console and was taking some of these technology steps. Okay, so let's automate those steps. And then whoever's there, it doesn't matter. He just gets a notification or she gets a notification that that step is, is completing or needs to complete. Do you approve? So you begin to get resilience on purpose in real time. So why continuity patrol? Just to sum up this whole idea what is the deal of resilience redefined you need complete visibility at a holistic level uh, for heterogeneous heterogeneous environments if i could say that right you need you don't need to worry anymore about the religion of vendor or tool or you know directed you know we do it this way and this is our procedure you need to be in control of the entire environment you need to have complete capability to act and you need to be able to test and drill as much as you can to prove that that is real. And, that, and when you do that, you get to the level of a Delta or a Pepsi or a Tata, and you begin to eliminate manual executions, which translates into all these erroneous outcomes and actually creates disasters. I don't know if you heard about the FAA thing. There was a simple application, and it said when you fly into or out of an airport, these are the obstacles that you may encounter. There's a tower, there's a windmill, there's a whatever. Someone put a wrong character in a COBOL program, a 30-year-old COBOL program in the identification division, for those of you who know COBOL. Um, and, th and that identification program would no longer spit out what objects to look for when you land and, fl and, uh, and, and fly out. So they, could, they had to land all the planes until they rebuilt that application. That took about a day. Think about the billions of dollars lost in revenue, not just in the airports and the airlines, but all the people that were trying to get somewhere all the people trying to see their family, all the people who are trying to do business themselves between companies, um, just because of that one fat-fingered manual execution. They called it a glitch. Now, somebody, human, got in there and messed it up, and they didn't have a way to fix it. I'm reminded of another example you may have heard of, which was the Colonial Pipeline, right? So we had no oil and no gas for about a week, uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, the operational pipeline worked fine, but they were ransomwared in their finance system, in their actual ERP, their, the AR system, and the, the ability to actually build. 
So because they couldn't no longer bill, they didn't ship any oil. So if I can't bill you for it, I'm not going to ship it to you. So if they had the ability to use our product, they would have turned it on. And an hour and a half later, they would have used an alternate in the cloud or an alternate offsite running that same application, tested it all. That's all working. They'd be back in business. But they can't do that. And they didn't even know what, what was going to happen. That's the thing. You don't know unless you drill. And if you don't monitor it in real time, you can't manage all the changes. So when an incident happens, then you find out, and only then do you find out that your plan was a point in time document and not a vibrant vital sign. So how do you reduce coordination points and all these SMEs involved? That's one of the big advantages customers come back and tell us. Central click control to monitor and manage all the compliance reports, continually optimizing, not a point in time, but ongoing cost reduction, ongoing RTO and RPO. We're talking on a weekly basis, being able to report to the to the stockholder, be able to report for the board, making this a part of your earning call, right? That we have a resilience organization and we have we have tested this and we have this much uptime. That is a value when you're you know competing with a Toyota. And a predictable SLA is a product with a roadmap. And that roadmap is what I want to show you to end this because this is where to me this really makes a difference. We've been doing this now for 11 years. We just released 6.0. I'm going to give you a little preview of what you might see at the DRJ show. I'm going to give you a little preview of what you might see when we do our demos with you uh, of where, where this product is, where it's going. So in five, we introduced AI machine learning for incident management. This over here you see. Um, and then we begin to do IT autonomous orchestration. So those workloads that you download was kind of the genesis of that. It started back here with the dependency discovery engine. So some people look at this across their environment and they say, wow, we've got thousands of applications and you know, thousands or tens of thousands of servers. And uh, how would we ever begin to do this mapping? Well, we have a module called the, End the Dependence and Discovery Engine. Back, we've had it for three, four years now. And it goes out and, and pings all the IPs and all the mappings and all the dependencies for that across every layer. So that's how you get started. And you still have to, you know, review that and make sure the configuration's right as it comes into the platform. But, you know, you don't have to start with going around and manually doing all that work. So that progressed into AI and machine learning with the actual behaviors and incidents. So now it's a recommendation in our current product where it's based on scenarios. Here are the workflow automations that have worked and are best practice and are proven. Because when you've got the companies I showed you at the beginning, iterating all through all these drills, what you've built is a library, not just of workflows or incidents, but you've built a, an IP community that has, is able to talk about how these vendors and, and technology layers interact, uh, how peoples and teams interact, what is best practice, all that can go into scenario-based workflow automation that you can literally download and test and drill, right? So it's no longer how we do it in our company or how you do it in your company. It's what got us the optimal RTO and RPO. Let's, let's ensconce that in the product, right? And then IT behavioral tracking, what actions were taken, what were the effectiveness of those actions, what resulted in configured uh, RTO and RPO. Um, I like to say the best way to predict the future is create it. So where we're going, you may have played with and, and seen a lot of stuff on AI and chat GPT. The machines are already talking. They're already showing and making recommendations today in our product in 2023. In 2025, it'll begin to talk to your natural language and say, hey, I just found some opportunity here. You might want to explore this and rethink your, your particular incident management. If there's opportunity in your value chain. It will become far deeper because it will take that IP of workflows and community and actions and behaviors and bring all of that together. Now, I ask you to take that and compare that level of machines now are talking to machines. And this is, this is where the complexity is not going to get less and get more. When you see execution, in applications using AI, those AI machines have to be backed up and have to have disaster recovery. They have to work across the cloud. They have to do all these kinds of things, right? So the complexity is getting greater. It's going to be greater to manage just continuity going forward because now you're having to have machines that talk to machines and support other machines. So you need a platform that's software driven, that's supported as a product, that incorporates all the IP and all the libraries and then uses AI as a way of bringing that to you in a simplified way. So let me give you a little peek of where this is going and what our current version has. This is something 
that is, uh, if you explore with us in the demo, if you do a quick start, you'll get a view of some of this. So here you see Continuity Patrol. This is our latest dashboard coming out. You see here the overall impact view of the business, the overall DR health of the business across all the different uh, uh, processes and all the different incidents. You see a compliance ranking system across different business services. You see a service-based heat, heat map. What are the recovery uh, business services that meet RTO? Which ones fails? My targets? how much of my business is actually protected. So this is a little snapshot to just give you a little sneak peek, a little taste, make you a little thirsty. This is this is a calendar, right? Imagine, imagine a calendar of all things where you can say, we're gonna have these automated drill activities on these days and times. Human beings are just going to watch them happen and get the results of them, right? These are the drill activities. These are the, these are, you can include humans in this. You can, you can mix and match. It's not either or, it's and. But you can actually have these drills kick off the same way you kick off a, you know, a data replication drill, but do it for an entire incident, an entire event, and just test it on a weekly basis. Huge, right? And then um, I mentioned the workflow configuration and be able to bring in these libraries and test these workflows. Here's where it's going. I want to draw your attention to this little box right here, this, this uh, rectangle. It has six different, uh, these are six different workflows. This is like a, a workflow of workflows, right? So here's the different, you know, three servers, 25 database, 15 different actions on this page. You count these boxes, 15. These six are here, and you see this little thing up here, it says P. Well, that means parallel. You can just add and delete objects. I mean, this looks like this looks like Microsoft Office, right? This is very simple, drag and drop. And these are happening in parallel, but it gets better. I mentioned the AI functions here. Uh-oh, Ada shows up. She's your continuity patrol assistant. And she says, you know what? You can add one more action item in the next step. So you can take this box right here and move it into that box and run it in parallel with the ones underneath it. So the machine is speaking and being suggestive based on behaviors and scenarios, what you can do in parallel, how you can collapse RTO and RPO. If you can't monitor, you can't manage, you can't do this. If you can't quantify, you can't qualify because if you move that box into the box below it, all of a sudden, those numbers that I showed you when you're building out that view for the business, it goes from, you know, an hour to 40 minutes. It goes from $30 million to $18 million. So if you say to the business, give me the money I need to put this platform in place, and the business risk will go from $500 million a year to $50 million a year. It'll go from a six-hour or 10-hour RPO to a 40-minute RPO. How do we know that? Because we've iterated and we continue to drill and we can prove this. This moves you to the head of the table. You're now a strategic uh, partner. When something happens, like what happened at Toyota or what happened to Southwest, you're ready to take advantage and step into that gap and fulfill and satisfy those customers and not have these issues because you're back online. So uh, one other thing I thought was really, for lack of a better word, cool was uh, the user profile. So here you see this one guy, Vinya, he's a senior UI guy, right? But uh, what's he doing? Well, here's the workflows he participates in. Here's his detailed information. Sometimes he gets notified, sometimes he don't. Here are the activities and the drills, 750 workflows, overall drills executed, what were successes, what were failures. You can see here what his actual access and permissions are, and then what he's actually done in real time across the platform. So we know what actions people are taking, what they participated in, what they didn't, and this is the incident level and the technology level. Right? This guy's in technology. And he's, he's, he's able to participate and review and approve workflows, but he's also uh, a participant in a much larger chain. So all of those views are there ready to be seen. A uh, couple of notes here, and we'll flip it over for questions. Where are we in the whole Gartner? Everybody wants to say, what about Gartner? Well, Gartner's released, uh, this is about five years old now, but they released something called a, a market guide. And they said there are seven, um, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, functional capabilities, I guess it is of ITRO, that's IT Resiliency Orchestration, right? So that ITRO, there's seven of these. You gotta have automation, replication, orchestration, dependencies, monitoring, reporting, DR management, and cloud architecture support. Those were the seven they named. They say Continuity Patrol supports a broad set of these, including an extended runbook automation library and IT service dependency mapping. Uh, technology connectors run from its runbook library, support all popular operating systems, platforms, databases, storage, network, replication software, right? Re very rich product dashboard for service health and GUI, uh, blah, 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 right? But the bottom line is 
we cover all seven. I challenge you to find anyone else who will stand up and say, we have a product that you can deploy that covers all seven. It's just not out there in the marketplace, which is why we're the dial tone and the default across the globe. In North America, uh, I joined about two and a half years ago. We've made incredible strides, but most people don't know that this is even available. You may be on the call today. You be, you know, you're struggling to get through your continuity planning. You're trying to build uh, continuity plans. You're trying to work with CMDBs. You're, you're trying to do scripting. You know, we work with all our IT partners. You know, Dell, IBM, and we hear all the stories about, you know, a script-based automation versus software-driven automation and what the pains are they're going through. Where we walk into and we see people with you know Excel spreadsheets and they're trying to get on conference calls and get things, all of that is not resilience. We have to find a way to do this with execution and accountability. That's resilience redefined. So you know what do customers say about us? You can go out and read the Gartner peer reviews. Uh, we have the highest reviews here on Gartner comparative to other parts of the market. Just take a look at that. Maybe get the chance. Um, how do you get started? I want to talk a little bit about the journey here before we open it up for questions. The idea here is you get started. You just start. You explore this. You do a very simple, you don't have to boil the ocean. You can pick a target application. Just pick a simple application. And we can prove RTO and RPO. We can prove the capability for that key application or that key incident. Uh, I got that's the, our best stories begin with someone saying, just come in here and prove it works. I want to start the app journey. I want to prove to the business that I can get this level of execution and visibility and monitoring. I can prove uh, savings in hard dollars. So get that automation for a set number of infrastructure components for that key application or two or three or five. Get a defined scope and investment. <coughs> the good news is it pays for itself. It's self-funding. So once you have the first buy-in and the first proof, it snowballs and it just grows like Pepsi just keeps growing. You know, the, the guy at Pepsi, I met him at the last DRJ show and his response was, I need um, to roll this out faster. And I need more people. That was his only complaint. I said, is there any problem? Bro? He was no. He says, I need I need it to be implemented across our business faster. So we'd love to have that situation with you and more people. Uh, we've got all the partners involved and you'll see this at, at DRJ. Very strategic re relationship with Dell. We're going to make some announcements there as well as CXO Partners, um, and some other companies will be there as well to make some announcements. We can't wait to see you there as well. I'm gonna open this up for the last 12 minutes or so for Q&A, uh, for answering your questions. So with that, you see my contact information here. I am available anytime, and I would love to talk to you. And we, you know, it's my pleasure. I'm very passionate, as you can probably tell, about what the opportunity here is, is to really redefine resilience and digital intelligence. So with that, Bob, you have the, the floor, and just uh, we'll orchestrate through some, if we have some questions. Wonderful. Thanks, Sean. If you do have any questions, again, uh, you can locate the question panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, jump into the one. It seems to, it looks like we've got three of them all around the same topic about uh, all the examples are large companies. What about a smaller one? Great, great, great question. So we have customers that are in the, um, I would say that are, for lack of a better word, they are in the downline of large brands. So they have smaller boutique brands. We have companies that are very, um, I would say very small, but in particularly in Dubai, we have companies that have brands that are very, uh, that, that, I would, that I would say are less than 10 million, less than 100 million in revenue, and we support them as well. So remember, this is software. It'll scale up and down. You can put a single server in the cloud, uh, you can start with one or two applications. So, you know, the key is to start. The key is to start the journey. And whatever size you are, you're going to need resilience. You're going to need continuity. I can't really name some of the smaller ones because I don't know that we have permission to. But they are, uh, some of them are very strategic to the governments. They provide a very specific product. Uh, but they're not size-wise and girth-wise very large. But they're highly strategic. So we can help you at any level. Our next question here, we have plenty of uh, business continuity tools, but what makes this different? Okay, well, I think hopefully we've covered some of that, but, you know, at the issue, it comes down to the two ideas. One is if you can't monitor, you can't manage. If you don't know what's going on as it happens and you haven't mapped 
<clears throat> an application with all of its components and all the dependencies in real time, then you find out only too late when you try to get people on the phone and you get them to execute that those IP addresses are wrong, that something got moved from site A to site B or from cloud A to cloud B, or we ended our agreement with that with that vendor, um, or that application hasn't been patched, and so on and so on and so on. You don't get the bad news until the incident happens. With our situation, you're hooked up to the to real-time vitals, real-time understanding. You've you've drilled as much as you want. You can drill every 15 minutes if you want to. No one's stopping you from drilling. It's your product in your environment and drill it. So you ask what makes us different. In the words of our customers, I would say they're in control. They feel very confident because they can drill as much as they want and they have a real-time monitoring and understanding of what's going on. And they can roll all of that up using the same platform and our patented capability to qualify to the business in hard dollars what that RTO is buying them. So they're getting millions of dollars there. So when you think about that comparatively to say a one-off tool that, that does continuity planning or another tool that attempts to do uh, automation, um, they just, they, they're, they're many times are presented by different companies. It's left up to the customer to do that integration. So with us, we're taking on a true partnership and a true accountability with the companies that we work with uh, to provide uh, a, an end-to-end -end, uh, resilience. Hopefully that answers that. I know that sounds a little markety, but it's, it's that's really what it comes down to is just simple, real-time uh, accountability. All right, next question here is around how does it support cyber recovery? Oh, great question. So uh, I don't have the time in this. We can maybe do a different webinar specific to this. This is a big, big part of our business. Uh, Dell will be at the show. They have a product called Cyber Vault that we are working with at uh, Lloyd's of London and other companies specifically to when you need to take your organization, air gap it, make it highly secure, move workloads and applications and entire environments from one cloud to another, one location to another. Uh, that level of automation is a key part of our platform as well. Uh, we also, Dell has another product that we work with called PPDM. There's some great products from IBM as well, but uh, uh, we are truly technology agnostic with PPDM, it's policy management. So that healthcare customer we talked about, they wanted the ability to move at a logical level, all tier zero applications or all tier one applications and apply a policy and have us provide automation to automatically take that action with all those applications at that tier. So that was a Dell policy management product that worked with CyberVault to do that. So. Um, we're doing firewall automation uh, with CyberVault. All the cyber recovery stuff that you would imagine, uh, as well as if you know if you've detected an issue and you need to take some action, people can't be, you know, there's there's two or three kinds of incidents. There's natural incidents, there's man-made incidents, and then there's truly you know outside-in attacks. If you're dealing with those situations, we have the same approach: libraries, workflows, tested drilling to deal with all of those, including you know, people doing denial of service attacks or ransomware, those are just, you know, it's just to us, it's what's the incident, you need to configure for the incident, the people in the process, and then we need to apply the technology automation to it, we need to validate, and then we need to test. So we treat them all the same, but in Cyber Recovery, we have deep, deep capabilities, enough for another webinar. All right, and does your product have any product or technology limitations? Ooh. You know, that's one of the reasons that I enjoy working here because it's always somebody asking something along the lines of, well, we have an old mainframe VAX machine and we want to hook that up to, the, you know, this VM set of VM instances and we want that to fly into the cloud. And, and by the way, what do you do about Kubernetes? And, you know, so, so far we have, a, we have, I'll just tell you, we have about 250 of that 500 people sitting there and maintaining those workflows and those libraries for these technologies and for the updates to those technologies and new technologies. So there's a lot of IP being maintained and built across all the vendors and all the different um, tool sets that are out there. So uh, I have not encountered uh, anything yet where we say we don't do that. Or we, we don't work with Solaris, for example, or we don't do something with, uh, you know, you name it, F5, right? We, we actually have those libraries in place, deployables of product. We've done this across now 450 customers. So what you see is um, 
you're rarely going to find a scenario that we haven't both tested and have something out of the box that deals not only just with that product, but the interdependencies of what's above and below it in the IT stack. All right, we'll take one more question. Uh, and this one has, uh, I guess, just read the question. <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying to paraphrase it. It's short. How long does implementation take? Well, you know, obviously that will vary. It's a very wide open question. Um, it's going to vary on average between three, three months to do all the implementation and testing to six months. Depends on how big a body of that apple, right? For one application, less than less than three months. But if you know, if you're dealing with uh, multiple locations, multiple applications, it could take a lot longer than that. So again, that's going to be a elastic measure. But just but just think through the idea of mapping and discovery, which is automated. The ability to uh, validate back to the business for each incident, what needs to happen in creating those workflows and doing the test. Uh, it's usually about a three month uh, to get started. And then after you get that first one built, it's as easy as doing that same iteration, but quicker because you can do more discovery, the platforms in place, and then you can just iterate through that uh, for many applications. So some of, our, some of our largest ones took six months to get there because they had five or six tier zero applications they wanted us to. To do it one time, but that's that's it's it's hard to give you an example. But that's that should give you some idea. Wonderful, thanks. And that wraps up the Q and A section of the uh, presentation here today. Uh, there are a few we didn't get to. We'll wrap up with everyone after the webinar's ended. So, any parting words here today, Sean? Again, you know, my deepest thanks for your time and the investment to to really listen and and uh, hopefully uh, see something you haven't seen. I would encourage everyone to do two things. One is either come to the DRJ show, the Phoenix Summit, uh, and, and see us. We, we do have a keynote. I think it's Tuesday of the show. We have a demo breakout room is the other thing. If you want to see this, because a lot of times the you don't you don't believe it till you see it, and we'll have all the guys in the room that can push the buttons live in our lab, let you see it. Dell will be there with us to talk about what we're doing in their labs. Um, and you'll, you'll see not just Dell, but other people there with us. I can't necessarily tell you else but uh we have some surprises but come to the show come to the demo workout uh workout demo breakout room we are we have a, a, a good size booth there in the trade show floor come and engage with us start your journey you you know i haven't made a big deal of this but what happens is you either create the future or you experience what happens when you didn't create the future so the people that have started the journey with us they're still on that journey. They, they're, they're automating their business, but they are a light year ahead of the people who are trying to do this with manual efforts that are still writing plans uh, and are hoping they work, who are still trying to uh, write scripts. All those things just won't work in a very complex world with all these different moving parts and all the complexity and noise that's out there. And that's only going to expand and get worse over time. So uh, we're here to help you start the journey. Let's get to the uh, resilience that you can trust to become a strategic competitive advantage of the business. Um, we are committed to that. This is a big deal for us, and we'll do what we say. So thank you again for your time. Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks again, everyone, for your attendance here today. We hope you gather some great information from today's webinar. I'd like to personally thank Sean for his time here today, as well as Perpetuity for sponsoring today's webinar. We will be emailing everyone on the link to the recording. You may view that recording as often as you wish or share it with your peers. If you have any additional questions, please contact Disaster Recovery Journal. Thank you again, and this now ends today's webinar. Thanks, everyone.